Okay, so, in the reaction to the news of the Kirk Cousins extension that dropped last evening, uh, you know, I always, I've, I've been, I've been, like, chronicling the, the, the Kirk Cousins derangement syndrome, um, I even have a playlist on my channel if you want to go find that now, chronicling the history of these, uh, of this insanity, um, you know, I never, I, I thought, I always, like, each time we get a round of Kirk Cousins derangement syndrome that, you know, makes its way through the fan base, it's like, and media, I throw them in there too, but, um, I feel like, oh, this, it's never going to get more ridiculous than this, and it always does, and the, the rage and just idiocy from so many fans, you know, in the, you know, it's been almost 24 hours since, uh, since the news broke about Kirk. I mean, this is, this is, this is, this is a new low for these people. Um, you know, you know, I joke about Kirk Cousins' Dranger Syndrome. I, I really think there's like a mental illness thing involved with some of these people. Just, just the rage, just the depression. And I know where this is coming from because, you know, for four years, they have hated this guy. They have hated Kirk Cousins since the day he signed. Um, and I think we just passed the anniversary of the day that he that he first signed here. Um, they have they have just fucking hated him. They hated him. You know, the two years, the first two years before he signed the the other extension, they were pissed off about the extension. They've hated him since then. They hated him this year, <laughs> but they also, you know. Because they were told by largely by, you know, in this case, it's mostly the media, certain agenda driven media people in this town. These people were told that Kirk's gone, that he's going to be gone now. Um, you know, that, you know, certainly that like once Zimmer and Spielman were gone, that, that Kirk was going to be gone. And I think that was before we kind of knew just the degree to which Zimmer hated Kirk. And never wanted him, but you know they they've been told, and they've been, they've been they've been, they've been licking their chops this whole last season that like this is going to be the end of Kirk. We're finally going to get rid of him because you know all, what, what did we hear? Forty five million dollar cap hit. Blah 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 blah. Now smart people such as myself and the other smart Vikings fans, and there's a lot of smart Vikings fans out there. There's a lot of ones who, who understand. Um, we knew that the forty five million dollar thing wasn't a factor because it was just going to mean probably another extension, you know, after that, which is what happened. They thought it was going to mean, oh, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to trade him. He's going to be gone because we're going to salary dump him because we have to get rid of him because he's terrible and he's destroyed the franchise. And they believe this and they bought in so hard. And now it didn't happen. The one thing, the one thing that these people have, you know, as, as far as their portion of their life that involves following the Vikings. This is what they have lived for, for, for years, really to, to see Kirk gone and it didn't happen for them. And they were told it was going to happen. They were, they were guaranteed big boy guaranteed it <laughs> over it's over. It's going off. He guaranteed it. He guaranteed that, you know, you get Zimmer and Spielman out of here. Well, no one's going to want to, you know, the next guys are going to, are, they're gonna see what they're gonna see what we see that Kirk is a is a is a cancer and he's a terrible quarterback and he's 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 a mediocre overpaid bum and they're gonna want to get rid of him. No, no, that's 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 these people's ignorant stance on Kirk Cousins. It doesn't it doesn't work that way because Quasey and Kevin and I and I know the ownership when it comes to like a big player like this i know the owners were involved too they understand they understand that kirk cousins is a damn good quarterback and he is not the reason that the previous guys were fired <laughs> smart people understand this the kirk cousins derangement syndrome people are not smart they're not smart i don't i don't care what i don't care what comebacks they have some of them found their way into the fucking comment section off my last video last night these people are not smart. They're not intelligent. They don't understand anything. 
and you know whatever format it is and video or social media or whatever or chat room whatever i've been screaming this about this stuff for years and you can't convince these people you can't convince them that they're wrong that they don't know what they're that you know every like every little bit of proof that they're wrong it's like it emboldens them to think that they're right even more it's it's really really strange um but you know the thing that they dreamed of happening didn't happen and they can't process it they cannot process this as like a normal person <laughs> as like a normal person would it's like oh oh they made a you know you know and there's been moves over the years that i've you know, roster moves that i've disagreed with with you know with all teams you know you're like oh well that, i didn't like that you don't you don't fly off the handle to the degree that some of these people have been flying off the handle in the last day they're they they simply cannot process what happened and they refuse to and they're and more than ever and this has been very very clear this is part of kirk cousins derangement syndrome is it turn it's essentially turns vikings fans or so-called vikings fans against the vikings because they are so consumed with seeing kirk cousins not succeed that they root for that they root for the failure of kirk cousins and by extension the minnesota vikings and now I've now I've seen so many variations in the last day of, you know, of, and it's 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 attacking the you know the Kirk Crusaders and the Kirk stands as they, as they as they so uh, cleverly call us. Um, so I've seen so many variations of like, well I can't wait to hear the excuses now when they don't win. Do these people realize what saying things like that means? Do they do they understand? They do they understand that this means that they are rooting for this scenario to play out? They are they, these people claim to be Vikings fans. They are rooting for this scenario to play out. They are rooting for, you know, Kevin and Quasey, you know, taking their shot with with Kirk. They're rooting for this to fail, so they can be right about Kirk. And of course, they wouldn't. That wouldn't make them right about Kirk anyway because the wins losses are not a fucking quarterback stat, which you know, again, smart people can understand. Kirk has strange syndrome. People are not smart, but they're rooting for this. They're, they, they claim to be Vikings fans and there's people just raging on social media. And I know social media is not like the whole fan base by any means, but there, there's certainly a section of it. And a lot of it is fueled by the media and people who aren't even on social media hear what media people say. And they take that to, to, be the reality um oh the fucking the, the the fucking tears from score north last night was great i actually first time ever i actually enjoyed watching a score north video um but uh yeah the, 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 i don't think these people understand this um you know because i would confront a couple people about it and like this means this means you're rooting against the vikings and they're like no we're not rooting we're just gonna be like you know told you so well that means you're rooting for that to happen you're rooting for the vikings to have bad seasons, disappointing seasons, whatever, Kirk to play bad, whatever. You're rooting for that. You claim to be a fan of the team, but you're not you're not a fan of the team because you're rooting for them to fail. And of course, you're rooting for them to fail because you have just this pathological hatred of a quarterback. And not and you're not even like you don't even hate a bad quarterback. You hate a damn good quarterback. Who, if you had a brain in your head, you could probably figure out is going to play the best football he's ever played because he's actually going to have a coach who will actually coach to his abilities and not sabotage him. We're not going to we're not going to see any more of this. This hey, it's second and twelve. Let's run it up the middle with Dalvin Cook. We're not going to see that shit anymore. And and he's going to play fucking great. And of course it won't matter because there's always going to be some excuse. This team, this team could, could, could soar next year. And we still have a lot of other roster moves to make. The only move I've seen that they've made today um, is they tendered Greg Joseph, which is fine. Um, It doesn't officially mean he's going to be on the team, but he's, you know, um, it means they can match any offers. And I don't know that there would be any offers and I'm fine with, with Greg Joseph. Like, you know, you got to have a kicker. And if, and if you believe the narrative, that's another the narrative that's floated around for years that Mike Zimmer was like 
some sort of specific, you know, cancer towards kickers, well, then, you know, keep Joseph and see if he thrives without Zimmer around. I don't know. Um, but that's the only move I've seen um, for today that they've made. There's still a lot of a lot of moves coming, I think. And there's some guys who have who have come off the board already for uh, free agents that had been had maybe been talked about. But back to the Kirk stuff. It's just <sighs> these people. These people are sick. What what goes on in the minds of these people? And of course, I saw. Of course, a lot of people also along with just, you know, the anger about Kirk. They're already calling for Kwesi to be fired. Of course, of course, of course. Guy's, guy's been on the job for a month and they already want him fired because he didn't he didn't do the thing that they that they demand he does, that, that they've been told that he was going to do. <laughs> so they want him fired. Like, it doesn't matter. He's, he's made, he, he made one move and they want him fired. This is this fan base, this these are the same people. These are the, all the same people who, after you know, if they go three and out on a drive in week one, they want the you know, the coaching staff fired and all the players released. It's the same people. These are these are not mentally well people. And again, maybe it's, maybe I shouldn't joke about mental illness because it's a real thing. But these people are fucking mentally ill. They just are. These these are not stable people. They do not have a stable mind because you know the the, the rage. The rage and whining and just, oh, they just, they just, they don't seem to have their mental faculties. And there's no fixing it. There's no, there's no getting through them. Trust me. I've tried. I have fucking tried. <laughs> I have tried to get through to these people. You cannot do it. And I've kind of just given up on trying to get through to them. I just want to like expose their idiocy, but. Like these, these people are not Vikings fans. They claim to be Vikings fans, but then in the same breath, they're saying, well, I can't wait for this team to fail so I can be right about Kirk, which is basically what they're saying, even if that's not the exact words they're using. That's what they're saying. And that's been the, what that's been their thing for years is they want Kirk to fail, which would make the Vikings fail. And he, Kirk has played very well and the Vikings haven't, haven't done, haven't, haven't uh, won that many games. What do you think would happen if Kirk hadn't played well? They, they'd have been, they'd have won two games. People don't understand this. They don't want to understand that wins and losses are not a QB thing because guess what? Kirk's better now than he was when he got here and they won fewer games than when he first got here. And of course, they've always got these issues well because his contract, well, it's never the contract. It's just never been the contract. That's just, that's just been their excuse because guess what? That contract, that cap hit that we heard about for two years, the $45 million cap hit that's going to, you know, that's going to ruin us. That thing got slashed by a third and they're still complaining. It was never. It was never about the cap. It's never about any of these other things that are kind of put out there for show. It's just that they don't like Kirk Cousins, and because he's a because he's kind of a kind of a square guy. I don't know. I don't. I don't get it. I think. I. I think. I that the fact that he's kind of a goofy, you know, square, you know, nerd basically like that. I think that makes him charming. I don't like the, the stuff with the vaccine. I don't like. You know his politics. I know are not good, but I, you know, he didn't talk about that vaccine thing. I don't think that's even going to be a factor next year because I don't think they're going to be. I don't think they're going to be like, you know, testing. And if you are positive, you're out of the out of the game. Um, like, and I ripped him for that. Like, he's not per. He's not perfect. He's not a perfect quarterback. He's not a perfect human being. But my God, he's a pretty damn good quarterback, and he's played pretty damn well for us. And yeah, it hasn't translated to wins and losses because wins and losses are more about more than about more than what the quarterback does on the field. It just is. These people don't want to accept it. So they've, you know, how many times have I seen, you know, in the last day? Well, have fun with another uh, eight win or nine win season. What what does that even mean? Like, <laughs> if if they. If, if they only win eight or nine games this year, it's probably going to be because they weren't able to fix the defense enough. But I don't, I don't think, I don't think people are like, just, it's, they're just insane about this. You know, you know, Kirk Cousins, whatever his contract is, it's always going to be considered, it's going to harm us and prevent us from building the roster. Now, I don't know what they're going to do with the rest of the roster. I don't know if, if certain guys are going to stay, go, what they're going to do with other free agents, drafting, all of it. 
I know that they had the, one of the worst defenses in football for two years running. It can't be much worse. And I think the offense is going to be much better, much more efficient, which will help the defense too. And, you know, you got an extra home game. You got an easier schedule. You got a really fucking hard schedule this past year too. That hurt. Injuries, you know, you brought in a new trainer. Like, I think the whole operation is going to be much, is going to be run much better, much, much smoother. They're going to actually play to guys' strengths. What a concept. And that's why I've been so gung ho about about you know you know keeping keeping Kirk because I want to see this. I want to see what you know. We've already seen what he can do with a defensive coach who really didn't know what he was doing as far as offense, and he put a lot of bad coordinators out there who didn't either didn't care, or didn't really know what they were doing, and game plans that just everyone saw it. It was like, what are you doing? We're not going to see that. I, I believe we're not going to see that with Kevin. I think he knows what he's doing. He he's he, he's comes from a coaching tree that's been very, very successful. And I think we're going to see something similar to that. You know, And I don't know that any of these other guys who have come from the McVay tree have, have stepped into anything resembling what O'Connell is with the, with, the, with the kind of weapons. And yeah, there's holes on the roster. There's holes on every roster. And there's still, and there's still a lot of work to do on this roster. But it doesn't matter because, you know, we kept Kirk so fire quasi. That's that's what these people say. And and they've written off the next two seasons because we, we dare to keep Kirk Cousins who they hate for reasons that they don't understand. It's it's it's, it's insanity. It's you can't and you can't get through to them because the, the just the premise of everything they believe in is wrong. It's just wrong. And they and you can't it's 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 deeper than just like it really is deeper than just like not understanding like facts and logic. Like it's a belief. Like you can't change someone's belief. It's like, it's like the religious beliefs. You can't, you know, it doesn't, you know, you, you can't, you can't get them off of that. No matter what you, you put in front of them, whatever facts, whatever logic, whatever stats. And the, you know, but you know, the stats always lie, but they only, only lie when it's, it's something good for Kirk. If it's something bad, then you know, then then we throw out stats all day long. But the uh, man, these these people are not well. Like I, <laughs> what are these people going to do? I mean, I they're not fans. I don't care. I, they're, but they're they're not fans. But they're obviously going to keep following what goes on with the Vikings. It's like, do they just love the torture? Because they're not going to get they're not going to get any enjoyment. Vikings have a good season next year, which I absolutely expect them to. They're, are they, they're not going to enjoy it. I guess anything short of a Super Bowl championship, they're not going to enjoy. And even if they fucking won a Super Bowl, then they'd still be like, well, they were supposed to. It's about time. They're never going to enjoy anything. That's the other, the other one that just baffles me is like, oh, we're, 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 there are people saying, oh, we're, we're, we're sunk for the next two years. Most of these fucking people wanted us to blow up the roster and, and tank for the next two years anyway. What are you talking about? Why is that? Why are you suddenly upset? This is what you you you, you, are, you wanted them to to, to tank the rock, tank the whole franchise, blow up the roster, get rid of everybody, start Kellen Mond, and you know just do nothing for the next couple of years anyway, because you because you among among all the many stupid things they believe, is they think that you know you have to tank to get good, and that that's what they wanted, and so now but now they're mad because we're not going to win a Super Bowl in the next two years. And yeah, the odds, the odds that we're going to win a Super Bowl next year are mathematically very small because that's how the world works. That's how the NFL works. The, the odds of any one team are very small. Whoever the favorites are going into next year, whether it's the Rams again or Green Bay or whoever, like their odds are going to be very small. That's that's how it works. <laughs> I know we're a hell, we have a hell of a lot better chance of doing something in the next two years with Kirk Cousins than with any fucking plan these people had. And they even and they even the way the contract was done, they kind of get what they want a little bit because the way it's set up, they could draft a quarterback. They could draft a quarterback this year or next year if they want. If there's somebody they like and they want to groom him and not and not throw him out to the wolves right away, which is which has sunk many a quarterback. I would be fine with that if they want to do that. I don't know that I would want to vote pick twelve this year to you know a quarterback. 
in a draft class that's not supposed to be very good for quarterbacks, but you could draft somebody, you know, beyond the first round. If, if, if they, you know, I would trust them that they, that they identify somebody that they like and they, and they think can be the successor to Kirk in a few years. I, th- I think that Kirk's going to excel in this offense and they're probably going to want to keep him beyond the two years, but you know, age happens and, you know, He's been very durable, but injuries happen. Like things can change, but, you know. But I mean, it leaves them. It leaves them a lot of options, you know, for if that if some of these other things do happen. So, <laughs> if, you know, you're, they're gonna get their way eventually, like, <laughs> or they might, you know, if if you know they can get they can get out of Kirk in a couple years if they if they find a guy, either find a guy who. Who they like in the draft and want to move on, or it just doesn't work out for whatever reason, or Kirk gets hurt, and you know that, that injuries nothing changes things like injuries, but that's never happened with Kirk before. But you know that could happen. Guys, you know, a guy can play a long career and then suddenly have an injury, and then that changes everything. You know, um, but I guess it doesn't matter because they want Crazy fired already, so it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what they do with the rest of free agency in the draft they just want him gone they want him gone because he kept the quarterback that they that they have this pathological hatred of that has made them hate the vikings the team they claim to be a fan of this is this this is the essence of kirk cousins derangement syndrome to me because it 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 just warps minds these people are just are just broken inside Something broke. I don't know what if I don't know if it was like literally the day that Kirk. I mean, I go back to the just the whiplash of Minneapolis miracle to thirty eight seven in a week. I think that fucked up. I think that fucked with the heads of a lot of Vikings fans, and I don't think they've. I don't think in a way they've recovered from that. And maybe some of these are the same people, you know, because then they were like, oh, well, we signed Kirk to be the final piece, and he didn't win it, so therefore he's he's the bane of our existence. Well, that's not really how logic works but you can't use logic with these people because if they understood logic they wouldn't hate Kirk Cousins the way that they do um this ain't gonna stop you know I enjoy I enjoy ripping the Kirk derangement syndrome people and I guess I got two more years of of doing it but at times at times it almost sinks to a level where I pity them because I, I I I'm guessing most cases, these people were Vikings fans at one point, like actual Vikings fans who rooted for the team to succeed. And they aren't like that anymore. They root for the failure of the team because they hate the quarterback so much that they would rather see the ship go down with Kirk completely than, you know, than to see a success with Kirk. And, you know, it's going to, we know, we all know what it's going to be 2022 and 2023. Every win is going to be in spite of Kirk. Every loss is going to be a hundred percent because of Kirk. It's going to be every game again. They'll be, they'll regurgitate the same tired narratives and talking points. I will refute them, and many others, the smart fans out there, will refute them with logic and facts, and it, it'll just go round and round. But this is the life we've chosen. Um, but I, I, I love, I love the move to keep him. I think it's going to work out really, really well. I think we're going to see, you know, not just a, not just a solid offense and a productive offense, but I think a very, a very dangerous offense. And it's not going to appease the people who need it, but that's that's just life, I guess. So we'll be back at some other point, I'm sure, with with big Vikings news because we still have some uh, some big roster decisions. There's a big Daniel Hunter thing that's got to be decided, I think, in the next couple days for sure. And other moves to uh, fill out the, you know, there's still there's still like a little bit over the cap, I think, um, but just barely. And that, man, that could be, they can fix that up with, uh, you know, just a couple of, <laughs> really just a couple restructurings and some stuff. And, uh, but the big one, the big domino fell with Kirk, and look, smart Vikings fans are happy, and the deranged people are sad and miserable, which is how they live their lives. <laughs>